Okay, so that's for box and whisk plots. Um, what about now? Let's look at some cumulative frequency histograms and and I don't know if I'm going to say this properly. An ogive. Um, we approach this in a slightly different way because um, it's not as clear cut um, what actually is the interquartile range in this case, right? Because remember, a cumulative frequency that's talking about a running total, right? A running total for your data set. So a normal frequency histogram has these bars which represent um, how much a certain score has occurred. But when you have a cumulative frequency um, one, what happens is that we have this ordered now and also each of these bars, they don't just represent, okay, how many times this particular value occurred or these particular values, it counts all of the previous ones as well. Okay, so that's what that means. So when you, by the time you get to 85, um, this class center, that's actually going to be looking at um, how many are in the data set, how many total scores are in the data set. And we can see we go all the way up to 800, so we know that there's 800 total values, right? That's something to think about. Another thing to consider is that the data is grouped into classes and the class center is written as the score. So typically with these, um, we will have a range, right? Um, we will have an approximation of where all of these values lie. So if this is not saying that if I go to, um, uh, let's look at this one here, for example, right? This is not saying that 35 occurred 100 times necessarily. Um, what's actually saying is that, okay, we have this range here. Um, if 35 is the class center, well, what's all the values um, that are around 35? Uh, what, would, what two values would need to be the average for that? Well, that would just be 30 and 40, right? And then we have 50 and 60 over here and so on and so forth. Like so, okay? So, um, the thing about this one is, again, it's an approximation. So um, 30 may not occur in this data set, but when we have the cumulative frequency histogram written this way, um, that's the best estimation that we have, right? So um, we say that between 30 and 40, there are 100 scores. That's the approximation for that. Which brings us to the question, what is the best approximation for the range and interquartile range for the set of data? So range, again, we're looking at the maximum value minus the minimum value. And although I said we don't know if 30 actually occurs into it, they're looking for an approximation. So that's okay. Yeah. So um, what's the highest and smallest value? Well, we've got 30 and 90 here. So for the range, we'll say that that's just going to be 90 minus 30, and that's going to be 60. Now, the interquartile range is not as clear cut. Remember how in the box and whisker plot we had a, a particular line which represented the... Um, Q3 and Q1 values. Here we have to try and work it out and estimate it. Um, and I'll emphasize again, it's an approximation, right? It's not telling us the um, exact um, value that it actually is, but to determine an approximation, remember, go back and think about what uh, do these quartiles do? They try and split these up into four equal groups. And it just so happens in this question that we can split 800 into four equal groups, and they're kind of done there for us already, right? Can you see how we've got 200... 400 and 600, right? So if you think about what's the halfway point between zero and 800, that would just be 400 if you divided it by two. That's actually your median, right? Um, where can I write that? Yeah, I guess. Yep. Um, now, if I wanted to find uh, Q1, for example, then I would just halve that again, and that's just going to be 200 there, right? Or if I thought about, okay, what's halfway between 400 and 800, right? That's just going to be 600 there because there's 200 on either side. So you can actually use your same strategies, but all you want to think about is, okay, how can I go from my total value, that's my total number of um, scores or values, and how do I get to those other typical um, values that I see, the median Q1 and Q3. So to go from 800 to the median, I just halved it, yeah? So 800 on two is 400. And then you can go ahead and find Q1 in some way. You could do 800 divided by 4. That's 200. And that will give you the location of Q1 and Q3. At this point, now that we have Q1 and Q3, in terms of their positions, remember, I need the actual values. So just to emphasize again, right? this is telling me the frequency. It's telling me how many um, values there are. Right. But the scores are what I'm particularly interested in. Like before when I did 90 minus 30, the scores are what I'm interested in. Now, I don't want to have to write out um, 30, 
five, uh, 35, 100 times, right? That's why we have this graphical representation. So what I have to do is I use the graph to estimate it. And this is where the OGIVE comes in, right? This is very important to determining our interquartile range because when I construct a line out from this 200 mark, where it touches the OGIVE is actually where I'm going to drop it down and that's going to be my estimation for Q1, right? So when I drop it down, where do I go? I get to 45. So Q1 equals to 45 is my estimation or approximation for that. And the same thing with Q3. Now the thing to note about Q3 is when you drop the line all the way across and see where it hits this highlighted line that I've got, you'll see that it actually hits a corner here, okay? So when it hits the corner and we drop it down, what we actually have to do is take the average of the two values that are here, and uh, we've actually already done that. That's halfway between 75 and 85, and that's just going to be 80, right? So Q3 is going to be 80. So um, just to recap that, we find the Q1 and Q3 positions, then we construct the line all the way out until it touches that um, diagonal OGIVE, um, that will be inside the cumulative frequency histogram. I've highlighted it for you so you can see it. So at this point here, and then we drop the line down to see um, what the score is actually going to be. And so in this case, the IQR is going to be, um, where was it, sorry, uh, 80. So Q3 minus Q1. So that's 80 minus 45. And that's going to be 35 is my interquartile range. Okay. So that's how we can answer a question like that.